<laughs> Check our mic. Check our mic. Test. Hello. Mic yeah, good. you got us. Good. Um. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi. Uh, hi, hi y'all. Um, Happy hello, Valentine's morning. Day. Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so good morning, good morning to uh, to you, and, and good morning to you all. Um, so my name is Mark Valdez, uh, and this is Todd London. Hi, and uh, and we're here uh, at the um, the Art Part uh, Theater Conference, uh, a conference for two people, uh, us, and uh, and so just b before we dive in, I just wanted to um, to really just kind of uh, well, first of all, uh, say some thank yous. Uh, Thank you to you for um, for this. Thank you to you. And uh, we are here uh, live at um, NYU uh, Cooper Square. Uh, so just want to give a big thank you to Roberto Uno and the Art Changes team uh, who are hosting us and were really kind and opening up their space to us. So thank you. Uh, really, really big thank you to Hal Round. Yay! Woo! Um, Hal round. They provided us with the swag for our conference as well. Nice. And um, so thank you uh, to Vijay Matthew and Jamie Galoon and Ramona, who's less Ostrov Ostrovsky. Uh huh. So so thank you. Um, I just want to give a, a personal thanks to uh, to Karen Atlas, uh, who's hosting me while I'm in town. Uh, so thank you. And um, yeah. So uh, anything that you want to add in terms of thank yous or anything? Not right now, but as we go, yeah. Cool. Um, so, so we're here. Uh, so, so what are we doing and <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Um, and and the, so, so, so why the art part? And I, I guess I would say, so Todd and I get to be at a lot of different convenings and we get invited to be at different tables to, to uh, either for grant panels or just field conversations or conferences. And um, often when we get together at these conferences, um, we both notice that we will start a conversation uh, that is talking about art, and somehow that conversation turns into a conversation of survival, of often around budget issues or fundraising or just things that are not working well in the field. And, and what may have started out as a conversation about art doesn't end up a conversation about art. And um, after that, you know, Todd and I would often, it's not uncommon to see us just talking about art or talking about that. And so, so this idea kind of uh, surfaced as we were having a, a conversation and we said, well, what if we take this private conversation and made it public? And, and um, just use this as an invitation to invite more conversations about art, about aesthetics, about practice, and, uh, and try to kind of center that in the conversations that we have as a field. Um, and, uh, and granted, like, we are not the field, we are just the two of us. And so, so the other thing that I just kind of want to bring up, and I think it's important for us to just acknowledge that, um, that this conversation is happening just between Todd and I, and, and it represents um, who we are, and, and, and also present is everything that we're not. So, so kind of copying to like two middle-aged guys um, sitting here at a university in a, in a really nice setting with access to this technology, uh, but also people who are, who we can only talk about all of this through our experiences and through who we are and how we were educated in our class and our, our own personal biographies, uh, which is to say that, that for everything that we are, there's a lot that we are not. And, um, and I think, I just kind of want to acknowledge that and that the conversation that we're going to have is, um, Will will kind of reflect all of those good, wonderful things, and will also kind of not represent the things that we're not and that we can't speak to personally. Because our intention here is just to talk first voice for ourselves, for our experiences. However, uh, our hope is that because we will not get everything that you all 
and other conversations can pick up and fill in all the things that we can't. And so collectively, uh, we can have a, a real representation of diversity and, and the, 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 the vastness of, of who makes art and, and the field uh, in America today. Uh, which brings us to the May Day Challenge. The May Day Challenge, the, two, or the art part, uh, May Day Challenge. And this goes with what Mark is saying. We, we intended this conversation to be the start of many conversations. Um, we bring with it our concern that survival issues and business issues and field infrastructure issues uh, are so dominant in our general conversations that um, we don't get to um, talk about the thing that we love and wh what we do in the theater. And so our challenge is uh, that you will join us before May Day, May 1st, by holding your own public or private conversation about art. And we will be trying that today and part of what we'll have to do is keep each other honest as we veer into like why I hate theater critics or you know what's wrong with this theater or that, that we come back to this thing that we love to art in uh, the very topics that we've laid out. So our challenge to you, you can sign up today on the art part at howround.com uh, and we'll issue that challenge again uh, and you can do that over the next weeks to come as well to let us know that you're holding a conversation of your own. Yeah, join us. I, I, hope, I, I hope you'll join us. Um, and, and also, just to be clear, like those conversations about survival and budgets and all things like fantastic conversations, and we should have those conversations, and we should have these conversations. So it's it just there's room for, for it all. So let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, um, so, so we needed to, to, as we were preparing for this, we needed to give it a structure. And um, uh, so what we thought and kind of agreed on is that we would start off because it's Valentine's Day. And, and I think it's safe to assume that, it's safe to say that, um, you know, th this conversation is grounded and comes from a place of love, from a place of deep care for what we do and the field that we're in and this, this medium that we've chosen, which is live theater and performance. Um, and so, so it comes from that. It comes from a place of love. And so, so we, we agreed and we thought like we, we should write a Valentine's Day card, send a Valentine's Day card to the field, to theater, and um, and that we will we will read those cards to you. Before we do that, uh -huh. I just want to lay out the day a little bit. Great, Can please we do that. Thank okay, yeah. so um, we're going to start with this whole. The next half hour is devoted to art and love, and we're going to start with our valentines. We'll then take a twenty-minute break. We'll come back and talk about um, collective creation, ensemble. Um, we'll then take a break for lunch until one o'clock and we'll come back and talk about playwriting and the, the solo voice. Um, and then we will come back at two o'clock, talk about civic engagement as art, the art or aesthetics of civic engagement. And then at three o'clock, our final session, we'll deal with legacy and lineage in theater. Did I do that? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. So on the hour. Uh, oh, and uh, also the invitation. Um, so we're here in a room by ourselves and uh, with Vijay, uh, and um, and so it would help us if if somebody <laughs> is watching, um, and if you have questions or comments, uh, send them along, uh, and you can uh, send them via tweet, uh, you can send them via email, via Facebook. Um, to the art part uh, at HowlRound.com and um, on the HowlRound Facebook page. On the HowlRound Facebook page. And the HowlRound f hashtag, HowlRound. Hashtag, hashtag HowlRound. HowlRound. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so we will talk for 30 minutes and then we'll like, make some room after that to, to respond to comments or questions um, if you have any. So, um, 
Why don't you read your Valentine's oh. Day card? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Um, so so um, my my plan had been to um, to just get an, a blank card and just write my feelings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to journal. This is awkward. Uh, it's so <laughs> awkward. Um, and then, uh, and then I thought, you know, like I, I think, I think what I wanted to do is find a card that expresses mm. my sentiments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably, uh, I would probably unpack that uh, as to why I don't want to reveal too many emotions. But, uh, <laughs> but here we go. So, uh, my love letter to you. Um, together, we've shared the good times, the difficult times, and everything in between. And we've come through it all as stronger partners, better friends, and more in love than ever. And that's what makes it all worthwhile. You'll never know how deeply I love you, want you, and need you. Happy Valentine's Day. That's so dear. Okay. I'm interested in want, need. Okay. Uh, but I'll do mine. So Mark and I had um, given e ourselves this prompt ahead of time to get Valentine's Day cards. And I had demanded that we keep our um, messages in the cards short. And then I broke uh, the rule a little bit um, because I decided I would write a poem um, it's addressed to not so funny Valentine. And it's got it's got this great um, like unicorn. unicorn in the back that you can't yeah. see, but it's quite it's a lovely. One of a kind unicorn. Okay. So the card itself begins the poem. It says, "Loved you yesterday." Love you still, always have, always will. Except those years in the 80s, you kind of sucked then and pissed me off. Every relationship has its ups and downs, I know, and you have to learn to fight with those you love, but man, our fights can get nasty. It's Valentine's Day, though, and we're speaking love. What do we talk about when we talk about that? How we met. How does anyone meet you? Dad's hats and mama's shoes, flashlight spots and dreams of flying. Lots of kids move on, but you hooked me, sweetheart, kept me hooked. In the morning we sang together and the air changed. A woman slipped through a hole to the underground and this time we sang in chorus, an opera for 10 year olds. Cue the teachers. You sparked my heart, my flint, your steel, they tended the tinder, fanned my flicker to flame, damned, besotted, unforgettable teachers, lackeys for love of you, pouring oil on a kid's fire. I was your candle, then your wildfire. Late morning, early noon, when we felt everything and couldn't settle for a second in our seats, you required all that feeling. Feel everything, you demanded. Suddenly, we could be everything before we even knew who we were. Who needs to settle when you can play? You were the beloved, the intense freedom of dream, the beloved who loved back through applause, through the ecstasy of feeling everything all together, through celebration. You haven't lost it, theater baby. You're still dreamy, except when you're not. Then the learning years. Greeks for justice or just retribution, boat rights and tinkers making plays for God, tragic and magic love before a queen, and centuries more calling us, asking only that we sit together and breathe together. And again we sing, then you did it, final straw. You pulled me shamelessly close so I could feel your breath in my ear, in my heart, and you whispered, every voice is a new voice. Listen, no one sings like anyone else. Everything a person is, 
is in her song, Describe It, Go. Sometimes, my love, I hate the form you take, the walls you raise around a space that should be home but isn't. I hate when you get showy. I'll never forgive you for transplanting our garden in the market square. It's wrong, and you know it. And who's running the show? Who are those people? Lose the song, you lose your way, my darling. Yes, I admit to years of heartbreak. But the wondrous world keeps starting over, and you are always in it. Brave new souls in a wrecked old world. I age and tire, and you just get younger. What's your secret? What potions up your sorcerer's sleeve? You taught me this above all. Our arms entwine and make a circle that can't be broken. We dream of flying, and so we fly. You are a bridge between us, and nothing bridges me like love of you. Here is my heart, then, still and always yours. Don't fuck it up. I'll hold yours with all the tenderness I have. Happy V-Day theater my love oh my goodness <laughs> okay now I'm gonna go crawl in a hole <laughs> I, 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 it's the thing I'm like there's so much love and it's and it's the you know the, like the best love is is complicated you know it's never it's never easy and you kind of have to work and and what I loved about that was just uh it, that that full range, mm -hmm. that, that, that everything. Yeah. It's really moving. So let me ask you about your Valentine. <laughs> so, why, when you say, uh, uh, it said something like, "You'll never know how much I need and want you." Yeah. Can you talk about the need? Yeah. Um. I you know, I, I I I I didn't grow up with theater like it wasn't a part of my upbringing it wasn't a part of you know it really just wasn't part of life it wasn't part of our culture or community or you, know, Did you grew up in texas grew up in texas town. yeah small kind of early childhood in a small rural town up in west texas and um and and when i when i found theater when i like saw my first play like as a kid in like school and um it um it just felt so it, um it 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 it, it, it just it felt like a home mm. you know it felt it felt like everything it was everything it was just everything like it really like it, it just that first play was it that it, it wasn't soon? so much like the first play you know, because it was there's the story like like there was something about the stories and the escape and the the imagination so sort of for me you know the, there wasn't room to imagine something different mm -hmm. so especially in a small town like you kind of know what life looks like because it's all around you and the many generations of variations of a life, and and so um, so suddenly I could imagine there was room and space and invitation to imagine something that wasn't that. Mm. And so, a queer kid in rural Texas, you know, uh, suddenly like that was that was um, it was a lifeline. Mm -hmm. And so the need and the want is is um, I I I. I it, it's not an exaggeration. I mean, like it, it, it's it's awkward to be talking so. Uh, it's a, it's an odd thing to just admit that. But it's it's uh, there's without it sounding like really trite and stupid. But it, it's um, I I need I I I need it. Like I uh, it 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 completes me. Sure. <laughs> you know. Sure. Well, I mean, I think the example of a life lived in service to it as you have as a director, as part of Cornerstone, as the uh, long-term executive director of the Network of Ensemble Theaters, the life service is, it detrivializes it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it may sound trite to say, I need you, I want you, but then to have lived it is proof, right? 
I mean, it's interesting for me, it, first of all, to think about this notion of love, of the art of theater, it's, um, it does go back to sort of origin stories, doesn't it? It has to, in a way, like how we met, you, you know, it, and how we started. And it's so different for me because my mother was a singer. She was a nightclub singer. My father had come back from a horrific experience cleaning out concentration camps after the war as a medic, a young kid, 19, 20 years old, and gone to the Pasadena Playhouse to take acting classes, do you know? And even though he <coughs> didn't pursue that, he sold cars and then sold advertising for guys who sold cars, I grew up seeing my mother on stage and grew up with the sort of mythology of my father's Pasadena Playhouse experience. And so when I started taking drama classes in Chicago and doing musicals and going to this amazing summer camp, musical theater camp that I went to, it was absolutely, you know, liturgy. It was the it was the synagogue or the church. It was my family, literally my family, and um, and because my mother was a better singer than she was mother, there was all this kind of like psychological attachment to that as well, that enterprise. So it is. It's interesting for you. It was like a way out. For me, it was like almost immersive in some sense. I think about like some of the things that you were writing about, like like the times when you're just really angry. And, and I, I feel like like relationships, like that's just, that's just relationships, right? Like there's times where it's like, <laughs> it's just, you just have to work to stay in it. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you've made a commitment and, and you're gonna stick it out and you just kind of have to do that. And, and I think about, you know, Kiara, uh, wrote that piece about... Kiara about, Hoodies? Yeah, who, does, uh, who wrote that piece about uh, how theater breaks her heart. And, uh, and, and, and I remember reading that and, and finding, like, there was something so familiar about, about that feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and so when you, when you kind of talked about that anger and that heartbreak, I, it was really connected with me. And, and, and this idea that um, I'm giving you my heart like I'm giving you this thing, mm -hmm. and the, treat it well, like treat yeah. it right, and and. Well, I do think that that, in, in a way, when I think about it, and I think we are talking about art, so I don't want to get too lost in my complaints, but there is a way in which, um, you know, it heartbreak is the right word. You know, Kiara uses that in her keynote speech that became an essay on um, HowlRound and, or no, in American Theater, in American Theater Magazine. And, um, and it's almost because the thing that you idealize, the thing that you love, the thing that you devote yourself to um, uh, is betray betrays you, you know? And so even the anger is steeped in the love, right? Hold it. And I think yeah. that's what I wanted to get. It was just like it, it's, it's, it's love. It's just part of being in love. And like, like I, I just kind of feel like for me, like I, it's like this lover who I just, who's way out of my league. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and and so like part of it Wait, for me why out of your league like <laughs> what does that mean what do you aspire to that i just i you know i, I wanted it so badly oh as a kid in west texas yeah and of, yeah. every and even now yeah. like 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 I, I feel like i've spent so much of my life trying to get theater to fall in love with me like mm. my love for the theater is like wholehearted like uh -huh. I, i'm the hook line sinker like you got wow. me. Wow. And I don't always feel like it's reciprocated. Like right. I feel like I am so deeply in love right. with this this field, this yeah. art that that sometimes likes me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I will take it. You right. know what I mean? Like right. that's right. the thing. I don't know if it's like a, <laughs> I'll a be totally your spaniel. Completely. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's that. Like it, and, yeah. and it's like that. Like I get it. Like I get that. Sure, if the all you can spare is like the 10 minutes or right. whatever, you know, right. like I'll take it. That's enough. Yeah. So so let's talk about actual work okay. that 
that moved you in that way. So you talked about seeing a play, but there are other things, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, there's the in love, right? There's the infatuation, there's the crush. But then at a certain point, it gets real. Yeah. And it needs to be nourished, right? So what are the things that made it real for you, the things you saw or did, and what has kept it nourished? I, I think performance. I think seeing... I, I, I think the thing that just feeds it are seeing amazing works of art. Like? You know, I, 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 one of the most important moments kind of like where I just, uh, I just I had to be a part of this was uh, I was in Dallas. Um, most everything that I had seen was uh, plays, kind of Chestnuts, Shakespeare, um, a couple of new plays, but, but really just kind of a, a straightforward play theater in regional theaters, uh, a couple of little things. And then um, I saw an Eric N. play, uh, and it blew my mind. Was this at Frontera? No, this was at uh, the Undermain Theater. Okay. Uh, it was a play called Beginner that he wrote for the ensemble. And there was, you know, it's Eric N. You know, so, so, so what does that mean? <laughs> it's, like, so, it's like a highly poetic, uh, beautiful images, amazing language. I don't, I, I don't always know what's going on, and that's okay. Like, it, I, it, was, it was fine. Like, I didn't need to know because I felt something that just, that was right. Like I felt something that would just, I was just on this journey. And it was a way of, you know, it was, it was, it did not feel like a play. It was, it was this, this kind of theater that I just had not seen. And it was a, it was this thing where, um, you know, I, I keep going, that, like that, I keep going back to that. Like it was an ensemble. Mm -hmm. It was a, a particular kind of, um, image kind of poetic narrative uh, that was fantasy and dream and completely real. And um, and I, I, I go back to that a lot, actually, of just like, oh, like it can be something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how about for you? Uh -huh. Like how, what, what, what nourishes your love? That's so fascinating. Well, I just on this for because I I associate you so much with ensemble work, and yes, you you just said it was an ensemble, but also Eric N is such a particular playwright and such a writerly writer as well. Um, you know, it's funny because partly I I was afraid as we were doing this that I would forget things because I'm it's hard for me to find examples sometimes, but also. Um, I, I feel that um, in some ways it's a betrayal to single out individual things totally. because there's, there's just like so, so many. Yeah. And even like recently, I mean, I, uh, you know, so there are the things that were key along the way and they're really different. I mean, there's like seeing the older kids do South Pacific and <laughs> West Side Story, yeah. do you know? There's then seeing... Um, for the first time, the performance group, as the Worcester group is, you know, branching off from them and working with them for a summer. Um, there's, you know, the sort of discovery of playwright voices and then contemporary playwrights. I mean, I remember, because it's so pivotal for me, reading the first part of Angels in America, Millennium Approaches, in TypeScript. Wow. And the first time that it was like, oh, my God, someone who is my contemporary has written a masterpiece and I'm holding this in my hand, you know, before it was yeah. produced. You know, I, recently it's like I saw, I mean, we're here in New York. I saw Heidi Schreck's What the Constitution Means to Me. Jeremy O'Harris is a slave play, both at New York Theater Workshop. Yes. Amazing, mm -hmm. extraordinary, and very different things. You know, I'm married to a playwright, Karen Hartman, and I've been um, up at Yale where her play Good Faith is. And there's something about living with someone's work over time. It's like you sort of live in every, every choice because mm -hmm. you know what that choice is cost you know it in relation to the work that came before it 
So I feel like surrounded, you know, it's like we live in a time that August Wilson wrote the century cycle. Yeah. We live in the days of Anna Devere Smith, you know, we live in the days of the double edge theater, which everyone should know, do you know? And, um, and then, you know, it, for me, so the, uh, this is like the big blah, 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 but it is, it's like this profusion of activity over the course of my life, including work I never saw live, like yeah. the, Joe Chaikin and the Open Theater. I never saw them live, and yet in some ways, and I guess we'll talk about lineage, it, it's as important to me as anything I saw. Yeah, as you, as you were talking, I, I was just thinking about like, so I live in California. Uh, uh, I travel a lot, but but home is California. And I think about just like being a kid in Texas, and like here you have you can feed your love so easily. You know, and I think about like what you know when when you when you don't like 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 when I was a kid I had scripts, or I had the occasional performance, and um, yeah. but uh, how you just have to work harder. Yeah. When, when you just can't, like, like literally hear, like, hundreds of choices. Right, but those scripts are, like, talismanic, aren't they? I mean, oh my I, goodness I they... still remember the Samuel French. The and Samuel Dr French, yes. Plays, you know, even from the 30s and 40s, <laughs> you know. And I would look at the back <laughs> and, like, to see the set design, you know, because, like, they would give you the drawings and the prop list. Right. And I would, I would like, study to make sure, like, oh, like, that's not how I imagined it. Or, yeah. oh, that's how, so when this happens. Yeah. And I would like cross-reference between yeah. those. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, I still have those scripts yeah. too. It's like I've carried them through life. <laughs> and then the names, it's, excuse me. And this for me, because I was a kid actor, uh -huh. you know, I would look up who was the name of the person oh, yes. who played <laughs> the that. Part. And that person would be like ancestor, do you know? <laughs> like Brandon DeWilda. <laughs> Do you know, it's like, who? But yes, he had played this role in that thing or, you know, the original Tony in West Side yeah. Story or, you know, whatever. And, and suddenly you're part of this family tree. <laughs> it's crazy. We have a, um, a, a response up here. Uh -huh. First May Day Challenge. You want to read that? <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, Bloomsburg Theater Ensemble. This is from Laurie McCants. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Uh, has already scheduled a retreat to discuss future programming based on our... Oh, Todd, please Artistic publish your dreams poem. Dreams and uh, Desires. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so that should grant... Uh, does that should grant oh, read an the opportunity? Whole thing, yeah. uh, so I'll read the whole thing. <laughs> just uh, read it. <laughs> yay. BTE has already scheduled a retreat to discuss future programming based on our own artistic dreams and desires. So that should grant an op uh, uh, opportunity arise. Should That's a grant yeah. so that should a grant opportunity arise. That's a love match. We can apply with true enthusiasm and hope, rather than twisting our plans and creating potential black holes in our budgets trying to fit a funder's initiative. Awesome. P.S. Todd, please publish your poem in HowlRound. Oh, nice. Yes. That's such a. It's such a beautiful thing because, um, oh, this is, is that from my wife? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Karen Hartman, <laughs> Karen Hartman comments, she quotes, no one sings like anyone else. Yes. Thank you both so much. That's <laughs> sweet. I love you, honey. Um, the, uh, that, oh. that thing about like leading with love in artistic planning yeah. So again, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of like what theaters don't do, but what a beautiful thing that Bloomsburg is talking about. It's like that you put on the table all the things you desire and want and need rather than, okay, what's this slot or what's this potential funding opportunity? Totally. And that you live in that. I mean, that's been the challenge, right? It's like, how do you live in the love that you feel? And how do you? Like, how do you select projects that you're going to work on? Um, that's a really big question. Uh, <laughs> and the, uh, I mean, I, I, I try to, I try to, I, 
I tried to, in, in the best of times, in the best of days, to do those projects that I really care about. Like, I, I have been very fortunate that, that um, it's been rare that I've had to do a project that I didn't want to do or felt I had to do. Uh, so, so, so that's been part of the nourishment of this love of like I actually get to work at companies that I have deep respect and love for on plays and stories and projects that I really care about. And, um, and that allows the relationship to grow. How about for you? Have you ever directed an Eric Ann play? I have. What was that? We commissioned him <laughs> when I was at Cornerstone, we commissioned a Christmas play called Mary Shelley's Santa Claus. Wow. And it was, um, instead of the creature, they, they make Santa Claus. And it, it really is it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece that is one of my favorites. Wow. And you directed it? I directed it. Huh. Um, Going back to the source. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, um, I'm not in a curatorial position right now, and I wasn't for many years. I was at New Dramatist for 18 years and never curated anything. And then, as you know, when I was at the University of Washington School of Drama, um, that was a very uh, sort of collective curatorial process, but there were sort of things I loved that I wanted, and sometimes it was people. So I brought you in. You chose Perestroika, um, which was something that I loved as well, but mostly it was the people, and I think that's an important thing to me when, because we're talking about projects and, and plays and so on, but I also think that theater because it allows us to be so um, intimate with each other and to work so deeply one-on-one -on -one that the choice of the people you surround yourself with, and I know we're gonna, this is kind of a natural segue yeah, to our yeah, next segment same. about company. Um, that's part of the love too. I mean, it's the people, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, I think that more, more I mean, that's, that's what's kept me like, like it's the like in in the moment in those moments where I feel like uh, theater didn't love me back. Uh, there were enough individuals who um, you just make connections with, who you yeah. hold on to, hold on to you, and, uh, and 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 keep you there. That's great. We're we're out of time right on time. the first segment, so this is good. And this is um, our opener. We're learning as we go yeah. here, and <laughs> we hope to. We're trying to put ourselves through an experience too. Yeah. Somebody on my Facebook page called it uh, durational, dialogic, devotional <laughs> duet, or something like that. So um, we're going to come back in twenty minutes at eleven, and we're going to really focus in on ensemble work, ensemble group work. Yeah. Um, and thank you for joining us, or thank you for soon joining soon us. Soon joining us, yeah. Bye. Bye.